you are probably wondering why I chose to call this exhibition an emphastic poem. And the reason is, is well, first let's talk about what an emphastic poem is. You may have first come across an emphastic poem in your grade 12 English literature course when you were studying John Keats. John Keats wrote a poem called An Ode on a Grecian Urn, which is an example of an emphastic poem. And maybe later on in years, you might remember Don McLean's song, Vincent. Again, it's another example of an emphastic poem. But basically, an emphastic poem is a poem about a piece of artwork. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about the exhibition that's on right now at the Lake Country Art Gallery called Emphastic Poem. It's an exhibition that features four artists. Michael Griffin, John Waite, Liz Earle, and Lois Huey Heck. All are painters in this exhibition and all have a unique approach to their practice. The art gallery is divided into four separate spaces, giving each artist their own space to, to bring the work together and let the work speak for itself. When you first enter the gallery, you come and meet Michael Griffin's work. On the wall straight in front of you is a series of gesture drawings that Michael was doing when he was visiting a local ballet school in Kelowna. These works are very fluid, they're very loose, they're very gestural, but I think they're also very much um, comment on the role of the artist and artist as observer too. These um, pieces are very approachable, yet very distant at the same time, if that makes any sense. And when you walk into the gallery directly onto your left hand side is an oil painting by Michael and it is entitled Batch Plat 1990. Again, it is another observation piece of work. Michael, the artist, is observing the land of that time in 1990. It is a batch plant that was located on the waterfront in Kelowna, which now has changed drastically as many communities in the Okanagan have. It's sort of a a representation of what was. Again, another example of artist as observer. As we go past Michael's work, we go to the left-hand side, and that's where you're going to find the paintings of John Waite. Again, John Waite is another artist who is observer too, although it's more specifically to the land in which he lives on. He is located on the Common Age, and if anyone knows where that is, that is a back road that leads from Lake Country to Vernon. A very beautiful drive. If you have ever had the opportunity to take that drive, it's quite lovely. And John's work is very much a testament to the changing landscape. Also the idea of, like Michael's piece, Batch Plant 1990, um, he is also observing and making commentary on how the land is changing around us. John Waite is a painter, and these paintings in this exhibition are acrylics on canvas. One particular piece that was quite a popular conversation piece was Orchard One. It is a depiction of an orchard found in our surrounding communities. It's also very nostalgic, as it is a representation of apple orchards as they once were. If you are familiar with the apple industry now in the Okanagan, it is very much high density production. And um, John is sort of, you know, documenting or acknowledging um, what was in this piece. Liz Earle's watercolors take up the middle of the gallery. And unlike Michael Griffin's work, which spoke um, of specific events and or landscape located in Kelowna and John Waite's work, which was specifically about either the Nicola Valley or about the Common Age. Liz Earle does work when she travels. So these wa beautiful watercolors that you see in the gallery are depicting places in Ontario, New Brunswick, and uh, Palmer Lake in Washington, DC. Liz tends to not work from um, the, the landscape from home, but instead on her travels. And her travels include everywhere from across Canada into the United States and into Mexico. Lois Huey Heck's work is interesting in the sense that it is not something that I, as a curator, gravitate to, and that is to acrylic 
force, although I would argue that Lois's work is anything but typical of an acrylic pour. Lois Huey Heck's work is dealing with the macro and the micro all at the same time. And what I feel is interesting about this work, although the process seems very um, loose and intuitive and haphazard and accidental, the fact that Lois is working on Upo paper and that the edges are very much contained and there is lots of breathing space around each composition makes me feel or get the idea that there's a lot more going on here than just happy accidents. Many artists have other careers to help support their art practice. And Liz Earle, Michael Griffin, John Waite, and Lois Huey Heck are great examples of artists who are working in other fields as well as having a committed art practice. An infrastic poem asks you, the viewer, to be the poet. So when you're standing in front of one of these paintings, think about the words that you are going to use in order to describe what you're looking at. And essentially, whatever you come up with becomes the poem. Remember, the poem can be anything. It can be free verse, it can rhyme, whatever you would like. And that is the end of our video tour. Thank you for watching. I'd also like to say a big thank you to Bonjean for putting this all together. Until next time.